Hey everybody, Rob Cohe here, talk a little bit about Autodesk Inventor Publisher. Now if you're responsible for technical publications in your organization, you're going to want to take a look at Inventor Publisher. Let's see how we can import 3D CAD data right into the scene here. Now we've got this, this nice little interface called the Marking Menu, and what you're going to see is I'm going to access this quite a bit throughout this entire demonstration. So let's go ahead and insert some CAD data. Look at all the file types that we can import natively right into Inventor Publisher. So let's go ahead first and bring in this rotor assembly. Now as I bring it in, it's beginning to develop what's called a storyboard. We're going to reference that quite a bit. Now I've got some other files out there that are maybe weren't necessarily created in Autodesk Inventor. Maybe they're created in, in Katia or Pro Engineer or something like that. But I want to include that possibly in this scene and you absolutely have the ability to merge multiple CAD applications all into the same storyboard. Now let's move on to authoring and, and how we can take this and, and really create very complete assembly documentation right here inside the interface. So first thing I want to do is I want to make a, a new snapshot. Now you're going to see me create a number of snapshots here, but this snapshot is actually going to represent the exploded view of this or the disassembled view. So as I rotate around, notice the view cube, very easy to use, intuitive interface for not only moving and, and, and disassembling your component, but also orientation of the model, you know, how you're looking at it and such. So let's just kind of select the components that we want and just drag them off in the dis so that our assembly is now essentially dis disassembled. All right, so there's our first snapshot. Let's go ahead and create a number of different snapshots. Now I'm going to create several snapshots that at, at each instance are going to designate the assembly sequence of this. So I'll create a new snapshot, right click, use my marking menu and stay, say restore to home or send it back to where it was. Again, creating another snapshot. Yet another one. And so these two actually I, I might want to change the orientation of or how I'm viewing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the scope of this edit. So by selecting two snapshots and determining, hey, this is, this is now my scope, I want it to be viewed in this orientation, it'll do that. And then once I, wa I want to go back to editing any one individual, I select the one individual, and again, now I'm doing individual edits. So it's all about the scope of your edits, right? So let's go ahead and add a couple more scenes here. Snapshots, rather, not scenes. And there's the restore home. So now this thing is now fully assembled at each instance along the way. I've created those snapshots. Now when I click on another one, notice that it, it explodes it out. Now again, here's that full scoping thing that I was talking about. Select the first one, select the last one. What I want to do here is I want to change the appearance of all these. And I've got a number of different appearance types and, and, and definitely you'll get the view that you're looking for. So let's go ahead and play this animation. Now wh what do you mean animation, Rob? How did the animation occur? Well the animation occurred as, as a matter of you creating multiple snapshots. Now that animation played pretty fast and maybe you want to be able to control some of those and we're going to get to that in just one second. First what I want to do is I want to create what's called annotations. So just like that I said hey you know I want a, I want a vertical call out on these and you'll notice that the the text field is blank you'll notice that they're square rather than slot so I'll change it again default interfaces here I can just simply select the ones that I want and it gives me uh, you know, the round, it gives me uh, no arrowheads, arrowheads if I want. Now the information that I want put in, into these uh, annotations is pulled directly from the CAD model, eliminating a huge opportunity for error when it comes to documenting this, pulling that information directly from the engineer's files. Now I want to add yet another sequence to this, and notice I just was able to right click, copy and paste, I didn't have to recreate the whole thing. Now here what I want to do is I want to designate something that's that's extremely important to the assembly of this particular brake rotor assembly. So I'm going to add some trails and I'm going to do some uh, I'm going to emphasize these components here by by doing a highlight. So let's let's add a, a call out here. Place it over here to the right and I'm just going to paste some text in there. And essentially what I'm what I'm highlighting here is, is, hey, these components need thread lock during the assembly of this brake rotor assembly. Now I've got plenty of control for fill, the outline, the shape, and all that. 
Now I also have the ability to bring in some imagery. Maybe I've got a warning symbol that says, hey look, this is really important. Don't miss this. So let's go ahead and add an image. Browse to my warning sign and place that into this snapshot. Again, I can control the, the outline. I control uh, border shutter, uh, border, <laughs> border background. And let's, let's place a, a text label in here as well. And basically, hey, um, you can really mess this up if we forget the thread locker, right? In, in, in more appropriate terms than what I just uh, described there. All right. So again, we've made this very clear that uh, thread lock is, is, is absolutely critical at this stage of assembly. All right, clicking on through the snapshots. Let's go ahead and add some trails here too because they're kind of spaced out a little bit. And the final one. Again, turn on the trail visibility. And there we are. Now let's take a look at the timing of this animation. Again, uh, we can do these large scope edits. So if I select multiple snapshots, I can say, you know, I, I want these at one second. Um, if I want one to display longer than the other, I have the control over that as well. And I also have control over the transition, whether it's going to be smooth, decelerating, accelerating, or linear. You have complete control over this animation. And again, the animation simply occurred as my <laughs> as I created multiple snapshots. Now let's go ahead and add a description to each one of these snapshots. This may be very important pieces of information that you want to pass along at each assembly sequence. So not only were we able to visually put right in the snapshot some very important piece of information when it came to uh, Loctite, um, this information is, is, is pertinent then to each individual snapshot. Now, And this is going to follow along as we go to publish these things out. So let's go ahead and play that and as you can see each description at each snapshot is displayed at each instance. And again you saw how we can we can change the uh, the timing of, of each snapshot while this is being played. And you also saw how easy it was to change the camera transitions. It's just a matter of editing the snapshot and changing it. Now let's see what happens when we do a design change in Autodesk Inventor. Now design changes happen all the time, right? Well normally in a technical publication standpoint, you're, you're sitting around and you're waiting for that, that, that final approval, right? Oh, when's engineering going to get me the new models? When's engineering going to get me the new drawings? Well right here, the engineers decided that, hey, you know what, this, this brake rotor gets too hot. So let's go ahead and, uh, and, and remove some material so it, so it cools a little bit easier here. I'll go ahead and save it and now I get notified either via email or maybe I'm part of the, uh, uh, the vault manufacturing process so that I get an update and I simply say hey, update the model and it reads the inventor model and it automatically updates not only the initial snapshot but every single snapshot along the entire sequence and I don't have to do any additional work. It all occurred at a, at, as, as a matter of me saying reread the inventor file. Now let's talk a little bit about publishing. Now here, uh, you know, so far I've done everything inside of, uh, of Inventor Publisher. Well, what if I want to create imagery? What if I want to create a flash file that I want to post up to um, our website for, uh, for assembly documentation? What if I want to create just, a, just an image? Notice all the control I have here of, uh, of, of images here. Transparent background, number of different sizes, number of different file types. Go ahead and save it out and look at that image directly from the engineering model. Let's go ahead and create a flash file. Again, I don't have to be a flash expert in order to do this. I don't have to be an engineer to work with the engineering's CAD, CAD data. I just need to create the appropriate assembly documentation so that the people assembling this or performing maintenance on it can get the information they need in the format they need. In summary, Autodesk Inventor Publisher enables you to create clear, accurate, and impactful product documentation, helping you give your customers a superior experience with your product.